speaking with uh, Tom Biankowski. He's with Arbor Networks. Tom, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing today? Things are great, can't complain. I was hoping we can start at the top and you tell me a little bit about Arbor Networks and what you guys do. Sure, Arbor Networks has uh, been around for about 12 years, 12 years now. We, um, we basically detect and stop DDoS attacks. Uh, we sell mainly to the large carriers of the world. In fact, we have products sold to about 90% of the carriers around the world. Um, we help, we help protect our networks from DDoS attacks. They in turn can take and monetize our products and sell services, DDoS protection services to their customers. You know, we've been doing that, like I said, about 12 years now. Um, we're moving into a couple different areas. Uh, one is into the hosting cloud provider segments. Uh, two is into the mobility side of a lot of these ISPs. And then uh, the third place is we're actually moving into the enterprise as well. We have a solution that works on the customer premises. Once it, it, it can detect and stop DDoS attacks, and when it needs to call for help, it'll send a signal up into the cloud and ask for help out of the carrier's DDoS protection service. This is really important because um, with so many infected computers around the globe, um, malicious users, malicious hackers can um, direct all of these computers and, and basically um, overwhelm a company's servers and subsequently bring their website down. That's correct, that's correct. It's definitely on the rise. Um, if you looked at some of our statistics from our Atlas research or our last security report, uh, DDoS attacks have increased uh, in size, frequency, and complexity over the last 10 years or so. Uh, it doesn't, and it's in fact, I think it's getting worse. Uh, the combination of volumetric attacks and application layer attacks uh, being done simultaneously against an organization really requires it, uh, an enterprise organization to rely upon their carrier for in-cloud DDoS protection from the large attacks. And then they uh, have to reply, rely upon premises-based protection against the application layer attacks. So, you know, it's this layered approach uh, to DDoS defense is really what the solution is for today's uh, attacks. So many people are probably familiar with the concept of um, lots of IP addresses coming in and just basically flooding your server and bringing it to its knees. But talk a little bit more about the application attacks and then how, how those um, are spread and how you can slow those down. Yeah, so you know the analogy is is kind of like you know you got the large volumetric. That's like your big tank or bazooka coming in. Um, what those attacks normally do is uh, kind of divert your attention. Uh, uh, a lot of times you'll see an attacker use that uh, to send off all the bells and whistles, divert everyone's attention to stopping that. Yet underneath, you know, below the radar, if you will, is the is the vol is the application layer attack. It specifically goes against vulnerabilities in the application. Um, for example, like you know, attack your DNS infrastructure, attack your uh, HTTP services. Uh, but, it's, but it does it with just a few packets at a time, very slowly. Uh, but those attacks are just as deadly. You know, they'll, they'll ultimately overwhelm that particular resource or service running, and it'll it'll bring it down just like a large volumetric attack. And Could that be like a buffer overrun in an application, or something like that? So, sort of like that. Yep. Definitely, but there's you know certain times an application like or a protocol needs to respond. For example, uh, you know to a simple TCP uh, command. So you'll see uh, uh, utilizing a TCP SYN floods, or there's an HTTP get. Where, the SYN flood where it's just sending the the SYNs but not the acknowledgement, exactly. or right? So it's just and then so the buffer is over overflow. Exactly. Or you know an HTTP get command. And, you know constantly it's the server has no choice but respond to those get commands, but ultimately it will fill some sort of a state table. And bring it down, but those those attacks are increasing in, in frequency. And like I said, they're just as just as uh, deadly as a large volumetric attack. And the attackers use a combination of both today. And it's pretty safe to say that, um, from a carrier standpoint, it makes a lot of sense to add these services because they're in a great position within the network from a technical perspective, and also from being able to manage IP addresses to ensure that their customers are uh, somewhat protected. I say somewhat because I I never want to imply that everything you can ever 100 percent or uh, solve every problem, but um, then on the enterprise side, um, every enterprise should be paying attention, especially those that have websites that are important to their business, right? Exactly. The, you know, the ISPs of the world are in a perfect con uh, place in, in the network to offer these sorts of services. In fact, you know, when it comes to these large attacks, there is you just no choice, but you have to ask for your ISP for help. By the time it reaches your premises, it's too late. You're, you're already you're, any defense mechanisms you have in place are going to be over, overwhelmed by these attacks. So you need the help of your ISP. At the same time, a lot of what we see is a lot of more progressive, larger enterprises are are also putting premises-based protection in place 
to stop the application layer attacks because they know, you know what applications are most important to them. Uh, they can kind of tweak and tune these sort of things for their environment. That's where the bigger carriers really don't know that environment. It's the combination of both of those that really give you the most comprehensive protection. So there tends to be a challenge uh, whenever you're selling something uh, that a company doesn't currently buy that they wait until it's they really need it. You know, sometimes you don't buy an alarm system until you've been burglarized. What are some um, resources that you have and where can people find them to learn up on this to potentially prepare ahead of time for these attacks? Uh, you know, on, our, on our public website, uh, under the um, resources section of the public website, there's a whole slew of information that will give both the carrier as well as the enterprise information about you know, the current trend of DDoS stats. Um, you know, we, one of the things we do on an annual basis is conduct a survey. Uh, part of that survey is analysis that we've done and we publish uh, an annual report. That report come, goes out to the media, a lot of the analyst community, they're, they're taking excerpts of that. So hopefully that is going down to our customer base as well. But our, our, our public website has a lot of information. There's another um, site we have called Atlas, yeah, atlas.arbor.net. And there you see a real-time 24-hour glimpse of threats happening around the world. And this comes from the deployment of our product um, that is deployed around the world through a majority of the world's service providers. You get a very unique view of what's happening real-time as far as threat activity. That's another area that you, know, you can, we can point our customers to. There's a question I was going to ask a little bit earlier, but you, you talked about the bazooka attack, and so let's say that's uh, 100,000 websites are aiming at your server, trying to bring it down, just flooding it with traffic. So do you selectively just shut down those IP addresses uh, for the short term until the attack stops? Is that one of the ways that you solve this problem? Yeah, one of the ways is we'll take that, um, you know, so the, the, the our system or solution will detect an attack, uh, it knows, uh, who's participating in that attack, so what IP addresses, it knows where they're coming from, it knows what applications it's using, what attack vectors it's using. It gives all that information uh, to the operator who then can swing the traffic to the scrubbing center where they use one of our products called the Threat Manager System, which would can you know very surgically remove certain types of traffic. It could be on the IP level, it could be at the application level, it could be down on a per packet basis, it could be based on a geo, you know, geolocation. There's a lot of different countermeasures that you can apply towards the mitigation of attack, not just, you know, not just an IP address. Great answer and thanks for your time. Okay, great. Talk to you guys.